In this video, we're going to be using Adobe Photoshop to uh, paint weapon silhouettes for concepting for a weapon design. So the primary reason you would do weapon silhouettes is a quick iterative process to um, explore different ideas. So in this particular lesson, we will be focusing on weapon silhouettes, but you could apply this to anything such as characters, vehicles, um, and and so on. You provide creature design, all kinds of things. Weapons is just a good starting point, um, and that's why we're going to go ahead and do this one. So if you have no no experience with weapon silhouettes, this is a great starting place. So the first thing you should do is you should decide a weapon. I mean, if you want you could do multiple weapons with the idea is to kind of decide one weapon and do variations of that. Um, and then what I would recommend you do that is you just kind of go find a you know, you look at some weapons ideas on, 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 on the internet, or especially some, you know, real ones that are crafted, maybe historical or fantasy, you know, fantastical, but those are both fine. But you want to go on the internet and find a very basic design that would speed up your process. So I just do a Google search here, literally typed in the word axe, I set my uh, Google parameters to large, and, and I went and found a, mo a, a basic axe. Um, you could find some that are very complicated or, you know, from video games, all kinds of things, and that's fine, but I do recommend that what you do is you pick something based in reality, because it's most likely going to be simpler. And you want to start simple because you're going to add on um, all the crazy uh, doodads and things that you could find in a fantasy game that you might be painting this weapon for. So I went and found a large one and downloaded this to the desktop. And I purposely downloaded one at an angle. Um, ideally, you want them to be orthogonal, either straight, uh, vertical, or, straight, or horizontal. But that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to rotate this out and um, uh, get this prepped for silhouette uh, painting. So after I've downloaded it, I created a Photoshop file document, which is I just made a wide one. It's not really the, 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 the I always make everything print quality, but honestly, the sizes of this aren't really important because you can always change it through through uh, canvas size which I'm sure I'm going to have to do through the course of this lecture. So you can uh, bring this axe file that you've downloaded or some other weapon that you might have downloaded into the scene. There's a couple different ways of doing it. Um, if you drag it straight in it creates a smart object. So if I click here and drag it in, straight in here it'll create a smart object. Um, which yeah we'll go ahead and do it that way. We'll go ahead and drag it in here create a smart object You'll get a little crosshairs. It looks like this. Um, you can resize this as you go. Go um, depending on what the resolution of the source file is, i.e., what this was. Um, you can go big or small, depending on you know up to that, and not lose any resolution. Um, it's really and again, it's really up to you. But I'm going to be doing probably something like this, and then. That's probably good. I'm just again. That's the whole the whole, the whole point of the silhouette process, though, is kind of, it's exploratory. So you're gonna see me change things all up a lot during the course of this video. So I'm gonna resize this to about here, and then when you and all I'm doing is clicking and left clicking and dragging on this edge, and then when I'm say it's okay, it's good. I'm gonna hit enter. All right. So the first thing here um, you need to take note of is, and it's very important to this particular kind of painting, is it's going to create this as a new layer. Um, you have your background layer, which is fine. Um, I'm probably going to darken that a little bit in a little bit. But the other thing is it creates a new layer for whatever reference image you brought in. And you can see it has this little paper icon, which denotes that it's a smart object. And there are, those things are great for a lot of things. Um, in this case, we don't want it to stay a smart object. We're going to rasterize that out, um, which we have to do to get various particular tools to work um, on this. Um, I probably should save out a copy of this, but I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm just going to go ahead and rasterize it straight up right now and, and deal with it um, right off the bat. So. Um, to rasterize something, a layer. So again, there's nothing wrong with smart objects. If you don't need to edit this, you can leave this as a smart object, but we will be editing this. So to rasterize this, right click, rasterize layer. Once the image is rasterized, or even before, you could, what you should do is you should rotate this to be uh, perfectly orthogonal as much as you can. So again, I'm just going to do Control T, which is the quick key for transform. And once again, you get a very familiar 
a transform box. I'm just going to hover my mouse or my pen uh, stylus to the uh, one of the corners. Any corner will do until you see the cro uh, the arrows turn into this these back and forth little arrows like this. And I'm going to start rotating. And again, if you hold down shift, you don't have to. You can lock in 15 degree increments. So maybe yours might be perfectly 45. In my case, it's not. I'm going to eyeball it to something about that. And you can see when I'm, I'm happy with it, I'm going to hit return. Maybe a little bit more. Return. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is we need to separate this from its background. Um, what I mean by separate it from its background, I'm not talking about the background on the layer here. I'm talking about the background inside the picture that we brought in. Granted, different reference you might bring in might not have a background, but many do. Um, they're flattened images, JPEGs on the on the internet, so they're gonna most likely have a background. If I hide the background, you'll, this will be easier to to be seen. So if I hide the back layer background, if I click on the little eyeball here, it'll you'll be able to see the background, the white background of the axe reference that I got. And because we rasterized it, we will be able to delete this. And we've talked about selection stuff in the in the in the background on uh, the past videos. For example, we can use marquee selections, or just straight up just come in here and erase this. I'm going to zoom a little closer with Control Plus and take a closer look. But there is an easier way to grab the, this white background um, and get rid of it. And um, how I would usually do is I, I like the old school wand tool, which is found under the wand. But you might not see it here. By default, Photoshop is set to the quick selection tool now. It's the newer one, which is a great tool. Uh, definitely for more complex stuff, but when it's very cook, you know, cut and dry like this, I prefer the magic wand tool. So I'm just clicking and holding on this tool right here. Or you can see it has a W. So the quick key to switch the tool is W. And again, from past videos, hopefully remember if you, you can switch between uh, different uh, sub tools by using Shift W. So if it's not the wand tool right there, right now it's the quick select, I can hit Shift W and switch to the wand tool. So it looks like a little wand right there. Now the wand tool is very simplistic. Wherever you click is the pixels it's going to select. And again, it uses a threshold called a tolerance up in the properties bar to determine how far it should go. Because the higher the tolerance, the more likely it's going to grab gradients of, a, of, of close to that color. So it kind of looks for a range. Um, and this is probably fine. If not, we'll find out. But if you are selecting things you don't want, uh, you can undo or control D for deselect, control D, um, and try just basically mess the tolerance here and try again. Mine currently set for 20. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And I'm just going to do a quick zoom in to kind of zoom around. It looks pretty good, actually. You know, control pl uh, plus. And it's not going to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. But, um, and I could clean this up a bit. I'm not, I don't, I don't think I'm, I think I'm good with the way it is. Um, and I'm just going to hit the delete key. If I didn't like it, I could undo or again, control D for deselect, maybe mess the, the, the tolerance and try again. Now, if for some reason, maybe your whatever image you guys download doesn't work, this, this is good. Um, there is other tools we can explore, but honestly, if, if it doesn't work at that point, I would probably just stick to the eraser tool, just straight up the E key and just erase what little bits you cannot, you don't, you don't like. And then again, we'll probably maybe in the, uh, I'll make a series of these and maybe I'll explore different ways of doing it as, as I go because there's lots of different ways of doing things in Photoshop okay so I have this weapon silhouette I personally like to paint my backgrounds on a not white color so I've isolated this axe as by itself no, no background pixels on it but I also like my background my layer background not to be white color I like I prefer a uh, neutral gray uh, mainly because it's just easier on the eyes, but also if you start painting back in light value over these things, um, I don't. Rec well, some people like to do it for the silhouettes. I don't generally do it, but if you did, it would be easier to to, to judge um, uh, those values. So you never don't want to use like a pure white background or a pure black background. You want some form of gray. Um, some people go flat out 50% gray. Others like a little bit darker gray, a little bit lighter gray. That's fine, but I would recommend a gray. So to do this, I'm going to uh, go to the background and darken this. And there, again, a lot of ways. I can just pick a gray color and fill it. But I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a different way. 
Um, I'm going to hit Control U for hue saturation. And if you like menus, it's found under Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation. So Control U. It brings up a dialog that looks something like this. Allows you to mess with the hue, saturation, and brightness of a of whatever you've selected, which currently is everything. There's nothing because nothing's selected, so it's selecting everything. Um, and granted, I mean, there's nothing we can't really hue pure white. There's nothing to hue on that, but and you can't really mess saturation on pure white. Um, so it doesn't do much in this particular instance, but you still can use uh, uh, lightness and change this to a negative value. So maybe I'll do like negative 60, and hit OK to make this like a dark gray. I like my, I like my gray a little just slight tinge darker. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn back on Axe Start here. As so, And you can see we have this Axe here on a transparent layer all by itself that we can use as a starting point. Now I'm, I'm going to preface this by saying this Axe should not exist at all um, in any form in your, your final build your final drawings. I mean if you're doing concepting you don't just take this axe off the internet obviously you would you would use it as a starting point I believe that's okay but it should not exist at all um, at the end it should be completely modified. Now this is silhouette drawing um, painting so uh, one way you could do this and how I would usually do this is I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of this layer as a backup right now and I'm just going to go hold, hold and make, to make a copy of the layer. There's a lot of ways of doing it, but how I like to do it is select your current layer, hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, and just drag up anywhere else in, in the layer area to duplicate that layer. See how it turns into those little black and white arrow at some point? I'm just going to drag a little bit while holding down Alt, and it'll copy that layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this axe start, and I'm just not going to mess with it at all. I just want to back up in case I mess up. It's always a good idea to make those. And in fact, I'm going to double click my background to turn this into an actual layer. And it will open up a dialog, which right as so. And just click OK. And that just allows me to move these things around now. Because before I could have moved the axe start below because it's the background layer, I'm just moving it below. Maybe I'll even group these together by selecting these two layers and hitting Control G. Just, just a group that I don't want to mess with or something. I'll call this source. So I'll call this source and I'll save that layer out as such. So the next thing I'm going to do is now that I have I have my background set and I have an axe, uh, the axe saved out as a default sa uh, save file here, I'm going to go ahead and man start manipulating the axe start copy here to have a black silhouette. Um, and again, the way we would do this is the exact same way I showed you how to darken the background here, but I'm just going to go a little bit farther. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control U on, make sure you're, the key, key part here is make sure you're on the correct layer, I'm on this layer, Control U, and I'm going to bring up the hue saturation, and I'm going to go completely on the lightness, all the way negative 100. So that's a silhouette, excuse me, black and white. And this will be our starting point for our axe. And in fact, I might even make one more copy before I get started. That one will eventually get this one will eventually get erased, but you know, just to be, so we can compare and contrast before as the video goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another copy. Um, again, you can alt drag over here, but you can actually, if you're on the move tool over here, so again I'm a little, little arrow right here, I can hold down the alt key and drag here as well. So actually I can do it in either place. I can do it in the layers. Or I can do it over here in the same thing. Just literally using the move tool, Alt to make a copy like this. And what I did was I held down the Alt key while I was in the move tool. And I held down Shift just to make sure it was even, um, as a bonus, even uh, cross. When I started dragging to the right, it, it went perfectly right. And a lot of this is a lot of layer manipulation. Um, so you're going, what you're going to do is you're going to be doing fills erasers and layer manipulation to, to get fast silhouettes and what I mean by that is maybe I'll come in here and I'm gonna zoom in a lot so I'm gonna zoom in and out quite a bit so again zooming is plus control plus and control minus but so hopefully you got that and like I said I probably won't mention that anymore for the rest of this video 
So I mean, that's how I'm moving around. If you again, you pan your your screen, the space bar. So you're gonna see me doing a lot of panning, a lot of zooming in and in and out. And again, there is lots of ways of doing that, but the way I do it was Control Plus, Control Minus. Okay. So maybe I'll come in here, and I'm gonna start. And I'm just, I'm just, again, I'm just doing this completely, you know, blind here. Uh, make sure you're on the right layers. And then I'm gonna come in here. And maybe I'll draw. I'm just using the lasso tool, the L key. So I'm on the regular lasso tool, and I'm just drawing a shape. And remember how the lasso tool works is it always wants to complete back. So if I make a drawing, draw a line here, a curve, a curved line. I'm trying to follow this edge roughly, and come back. And I come up here and I stop because I know it's going to finish the connection for me up to the top. And once I finish that connection, I'm going to go ahead and use the shift backspace tool here to fill this. And the fill it for me is coming up on a different screen. One second. There we go. Move it down here. So if I fill this, it's defaulting to content aware, uh, which is which is great for photography type stuff, but we want foreground color. And the reason I want foreground color is because I am painting in black. Now I advise that you just paint in black and use the eraser. Some people will, um, will do this because I use layers a lot. Some people will straight paint black and white on one layer and not ever bother to do layers, but I like layers for this because you can duplicate a lot of things faster. So foreground, okay. There we go. Control D to deselect. And I don't actually don't mind this little. And this is this is where I mean by it's kind of exploratory. Happy accidents are going to happen. I don't mind this little nook in here, or things. So maybe I'll come in here and maybe maybe mess with the top a bit. So do something like that. Shift delete for fill. You can see I can draw that axe. I don't know if I like that. Maybe I'll come out a little bit more. Do a little lasso. Shift backspace. And that's okay. Um, and again, I'm not going to get too complicated. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to end up doing like double bladed axes, which granted this is the shape of the, this, the handle is kind of meant for, for one, you know, a single sided axe. Um, so I might have to tweak this a bit, um, but I'm, I'm kind of, you know, exploring this idea. And again, this is very much a, like a, you know, a default camping axe, like a normal world. We're going to get, of course, get fantastical. So, um, already I can tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to make probably, I'm leaving, this is just my choice I'm making. I'm going to make this a double bladed axe and I'm gonna make this hilt uh, be not so dramatic. So how can I fix this? Well that's the great thing about working in layers is I can come in here maybe and I, what I'll do is I will just use the marquee selection tool and I'm just gonna go ahead and get this you know draw a box something like this. And I'm just gonna select this this whole right side here and I'm going to hit the backspace button or the delete key on your keyboard to delete it. And there you go, you can see I deleted it. Control D to deselect. So again, M is the marquee tool. Select whatever you want. You can use deletes or fills. I haven't done any fills yet. And then Control D to deselect. Now what am I going to do? So I want obviously this to be on the other side. So here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this, this layer. V key for move, because to order to make copies in this window, you have to be on the move tool. So v, Victor, V key for move, hold down the Alt key, so that allow you to move and make copies. I'm going to move it, and I'm going to hold on Shift while I'm holding down Alt to make sure it's perfectly going left and right. Something like that. And again, it made, made a copy over here for a second copy. So this is a, a perfect copy. It's perfectly going to the right, and all I need to do is flip this. Um, to flip this again, there's and everything in Photoshop. There's lots of ways, but I'm going to do it with Control T again, which I showed you how to rotate because I'm just going to enforce this tool heavily in this lecture. Control T, which brings up the manipulator, and of course we can scale, we can move, we can rotate. But there's other things you can do. If you actually click on this, left click um, on this, you actually have more options. So you can actually, and I'm not going to go through all these, I probably will in the video, but not right now. But a couple of the options down here at the very bottom are flip horizontal and flip vertical. So I want to flip this horizontal. You can see, I flipped it horizontal. Once I flipped it horizontal, to commit any transform that you do, you hit the enter key and you to commit it. 
and then I'll just use the V key again, which I'm still on. And I can use either use my mouse or I can use my arrows on my keyboard, just the arrow buttons. I'm going to nudge this back over here. And again, I mean it's it's one you know pure size here. And I'm like, okay, I don't I don't know if I like the way that 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 handle looks. I don't think that's going to be my finalized one. But that's, that's the great thing about this process. It's iterative. So I'm, I'm going to just call this good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select those two layers. And this is just a quick for organization. You don't want your layers to get, a, you know, you're going to use layers a lot. So you don't want them to get out of control. So you do want to merge when you can. And this is a, a pretty good spot to merge. So I'm going to merge the left half and the right half together. So I'm going to select those two layers, control E. And there you go. You can say, say one done. And I'm going to turn off the original because you know what? I'm not going to even work from the original anymore. At least for the rest of this video. So we're going to call this one the first one of our of our axes done. Now this is something I would do like I would make this is something you would do lots and lots of iterations on. Like you would do like in this case we weapons being very simple, I could do like thirty something weapons and you know before I I use what you know maybe a, a small handful of them for actual products down the line. So that it's meant to be exploratory. So. Um, we can always go back to the original. That's why I kept it there. But I like to build off for at least a series. You know, you move to like four or five, just building off the one I have and changing it. So again, I'm just gonna. I hid the original by clicking the little eyeball. I move this one over to the left a little bit. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this one. Hold down Alt and drag. And you can see I'm just gonna drag that one over. Now I already said I didn't like the handle, so maybe I'll try a little bit with the handle. Play with the handle a bit. Uh, maybe I'll come in here, and I'm, I'm only going to focus on one side. Uh, I don't like what I did right there. So I drew a little lasso. Remember, you hold on Alt, you can subtract from your selection. So this, in this case, I'll be adding some of the selection this back. And I'm just going to hit the Delete key. And I don't think I like I tried to put a little bump in there. It's not crooked drawing with my hands. So let's see, something like that maybe. Clean it up a little bit better. Uh, that might be good. Like I said, I'm gonna. I, I I won't know until I mirror it. Maybe I'll come in here and do a little thing like that. Get rid of that a little bit. Uh, I don't like that. See, a lot of this you're gonna go back and forth. So I just did a little selection. Um, I'm gonna fill. Whenever you wanna add to the selection, I'm just doing fills. So Shift Backspace. You know, I never wanna take away from the selection. It's just straight up delete. So maybe I'll come in and add. Uh, these end up looking just more and more ridiculous with each pass a lot of times. That's why I said I will, I will usually reset at some point. Like you see, I'm just going to now kind of make a last, last selection to fill that part. Maybe I'll come in here and add a little thing like this. Fill that part. Maybe I'll come in here and add this little thing here. Add that part. And like I said, it's going to look more and more um, fantastical as you go usually. So I'm going to Make a selection here. Draw about half of it. And the great thing is you don't have to be perfect. Deselect, Control D. Again on the Move tool, Alt and Shift. Got my other half, Control T. Click on the thing, Transform. Go to the flip horizontal and click there. Return to commit, and then just use little little arrows, drag them back and forth. So yes, I do like that handle a little bit better. So you can see already it's starting to look more, a little more interesting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select those two layers and Control E. Move a little closer. I'll worry about spacing and, and all that stuff um, later. But you can see this is the process. We continue to make more and more silhouettes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, okay, I'm happy with my bat axe. That's what I'm going to call it. My bat axe, I'm going to move it a little bit make a copy of it. Again, I'm holding down Alt and Shift. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to repeat this process. Maybe I will... Of course, you can always look in, uh, at reference to get more ideas from starting out. Or you can just kind of come in here and just kind of, again, see if you uh, get those happy accidents to quote a famous teacher. So I'm coming in here making selections.
I'm stuck. Uh, if you ever see yourself get stuck on something, one thing you should check to see if you're up here accidentally in a mode. I was actually accidentally on feather, so I kept freaking out. So there we go. I don't know if I'm going to like that. Undo. I'm just going to do this over here right now. And again, you can see I'm just moving around. Making my lasso using the L key to switch to lasso. I want to fill something in. Shift backspace. Foreground color. I said leave my foreground color in black. And um, if you want to get rid of stuff, you just select things and use the delete key. Kind of like that shape. Um, and you you're more than welcome to explore cutting forms out as well. Um, so like for example, you can maybe. Do something like this, maybe you know, delete there, maybe come in here, delete there. And again, this is just quick and dirty. Uh, we can make these uh again I'm accidentally up here. We can make these these be a lot more aligned, which I you know I might do, but right now I'm just kinda going quick to kind of get this shown. And I don't like that. I'm zooming in and out it's the same way as taking like a step back. Like I definitely don't. It's bothered me. I, I said I was going to do quick and dirty, but it bothers me already. So maybe I'll just do the two. So I filled that back in. Um, maybe I'll clean up these things. And there's tools you can use, such as smoothing operations, to try to get these better. If you're if you're you have a, uh, a shaky hand, like sometimes I tend to do. Um, so there you go. Let's see, kind of looks good there. I'll go ahead and show it to you guys. I don't use it heavily. But just to show for the purpose of showing you, um, if you have a selection, and this one's pretty good actually, but just to show you anyway, um, actually, hold on, let me see. Yeah, that one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. All right, so I'll do a different one. So let's say I want to smooth this out. Maybe I want to, I'll do, I'll not purposely do this kind of crooked, crooked, little crooked there. So it's a little, you know, it went kind of a little jaggedy there on purpose. So what you can do is you can come up here to the select, modify, and smooth. And it'll give you an attribute. That you have to, and you kind of have to guess here. Um, you, as you get familiar, more familiar with your, um, how, your working size, how much your your, your canvas looks, how, the size of your image is, that, that it'll vary. So ten might be more extreme, for example, on a smaller image versus a larger one. So uh, the first maybe first couple times when you're on a working file, um, if you continue to work at that size, then it'll be it will be consistent, but if you keep jumping around with your file sizes, this is going to vary based on your file size. So I'm just going to do 10 um, and see how much smoothing that does. And you can see it smoothed it quite a bit, actually. Um, so you can see it smoothed it out. So before and then after. This history, we'll talk about that later. So that's after. So now if I hit delete, you can see it had a slightly more smooth function there. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Here's a little, going a little bit slower right now. One second. There it goes. I think it's finally kicking in. All right. Uh, maybe I'll change this handle a little bit down here too. Maybe I'll just for the sake of getting a little, little bit of differences in here. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and hold on Alt. Let's make my copy, and once again transform and flip it. Use my arrows to nudge this back. That looks pretty good. So you can see there's a different kind of axe. All right. And this, I repeat this process. Um, you can generally go as many as you want. Like what I would, I, as you can kind of see, I'm building up on these ones. I might do, end up doing, you know, I'm just making copies for visual examples. I might end up doing like five or six or maybe even ten. And then what I'll do is maybe I'll, I will pick one or two and then reset. So, for example, I might eventually come back. It's like, ooh, I really like that one, and I'll do uh, the that one, and I'll, I'll start with that one as my base and kind of manipulate from that one and see where it goes. So, you're constantly manipulating these as you go. Um, and now I'm just going to keep going, you know, over right now. And of course, these axes are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, I'll eventually reset them. So, let's go ahead and do a different axe now. I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half now just so I can see it. And then what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make this handle bigger. So there's a lot of ways we can do this. And 
Um, it requires a little bit of cleanup, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and I kind of like the shape of it, but I'm just saying I like the shape of it, I don't really actually do. I'm going to go ahead and draw the lasso and use control T and transform it. So this is just a different way of making it. And you could fly, you can distort it by holding down shift key. So you want to make this longer. Now this has, can have problems if you go too far with it that you might make it uh, blurry. So you can come in, there's technically other tools we can do, but I mean for the sake of sticking to certain tool set in this lecture, I'm just going to kind of trace it with the lasso tool once again. Kind of do that. So I kind of got to see what that looks like. I'm kind of going to fill this back in for this for this iteration. And then maybe I'll fill, put a shape there. And again, I'm just randomly lassoing things and, you know, deciding on ideas. So it's meant to be quick. So be quick with it. Don't think about it too much. Because um, that's the whole point of this is to iterate. You, put, you should be able to do a bunch of these in like a single a single sitting. And, um, to show to show somebody that's what we would do we would show a t our team and say okay which ones do we like does this fit this character or should we go something more 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 uh, you know uh, evil looking or should it look more nature like you know or whatever the case may be you'll get you'll get feedback on these designs and um, you'll make decisions that, um, based on those designs so um, again remember I I want to try to manipulate this a little bit more. Um, and remember, you can use uh, your layers to, to help with that. So I'm going to try to do something um, here that's different, just to showcase this. But to, in order to do this, I need to cut this top part off. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate, transform, manipulate. But I want to manipulate this like this area. I don't want to manipulate the handle in this particular instance. So I mean, it's not that hard. All I'm going to do is cut, I'm gonna drag a little marquee selection on here. And I'm going to cut this which is control X and then I'm going to paste it in the exact same spot um, if you hit control V it pasted it but for whatever reason it pasted it like in the center so if you, I did that so if you actually instead of hitting control V if you hit control shift V it'll paste in the exact same spot there we go it's off by a pixel maybe because I was undoing actions I'm not sure um, so now I've copied this into its own layer, and I have the handle in its own layer. And I'll eventually merge them back, but the reason I did this is I want to control T here. I could have just drawn a marquee selection and did this too, actually, but I didn't. Um, but it is a different layer. And then what I'm going to show you is another transform tool here. So again, I'll do, I can do rotates and scales in here, but if I want to do any of the other ones, you can do, um, you have to left click on this. And like I said, we, we did flip vertical and horizontal, or well, horizontal, but they're right there. Talked about them. We got 90 degree increments. And we also got these ones. So skew skews it, which means if I grab this now, and, and, and you can see it now grabs the corners, and they don't scale it. It just kind of skews it. So maybe you can maybe change the shape a little bit to get something. And that looks kind of cool. Um, I, might, I might go with that one. I kind of like that one. But while I'm here, I'm going to talk about these some more. You can... Distort it, which kind of the same thing. It messes with the form, but it, just the way it behaves is differently. Skew tried to keep it kind of a perspective in, in mind, where distort doesn't really care. It just kind of just manipulates it. That one looks pretty cool, too. And then the last one on here, or actually there's two more in here. There's perspective, which is actual perspective. It tries to keep it truly in perspective, and there's warp. But I think I might save those for the next part, the next axe. So I'll go ahead and go ahead and commit that and again remember I, I separated them out for whatever reason I said could have just did that again with just having a marquee selection I'm gonna merge those back and I'm just gonna see what this looks like so I'm gonna go ahead and move a copy over holding up alt and shift while you're on the move tool transform click flip horizontal return and then I'm just using the arrows to bring it together. And I kind of like the way that looks. You go ahead and get all these heavy metal looking axes here. And I'm going to merge the two halves together. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and move this on. And that other one. So what I'm going to do is once again, 
is I'm going to go ahead and copy, uh, cut, cut this. So I made a selection on my copy. Control, uh, control X, Control Shift V to paste in the exact same spot. And then I'm going to use the transform tool because I'm going to actually play with this by flipping it. That's why I cut it. And I'm going to flip it vertically. Looks like the guitar. I'll come and paint the rest of this in later. And I kind of like this little thing up here. Maybe I'll turn this into a little stabby thing. Of course, I'm going to delete the other half first. And then I got to come in here and paint up this thing. So maybe I'll do a little lasso here. And you could use this actually to your advantage. Maybe you might want to create a new layer and do something like this. Just ideas here for you guys. Maybe I'll draw a little shape like this, and I'll fill that. I got my little stabby nub thing here. And again, I just, I'm using the Move tool and Alt, and I got that. And I'm gonna, I just made a bunch of layers by repeating that. See, getting sloppy, and that's the point. You're supposed to be sloppy with this. You're not supposed to take forever to do this. Got to merge these back together before I can erase the half. There we go. Let's see. There we go. I didn't do much with the axe other than flip it, but you know what? Let's call that a day. Let's see what it looks like. Oops. Slept to the wrong layer. Let's try this again. Control T. Transform, flip. Move it over, move it over, move it over, move it over. If you judge it's too close to this one, which in you know, my opinion it is, you could come back and edit some more, obviously, before you flipped it. But again, for the sake of the lecture, I'm just trying to, to move on. All right, so one last one here, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about those last transform tools. And I think I, I think after that, I think this is kind of, we got the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and um, cut this in half again. I think uh, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these spike things on here. Maybe I'll just use the eraser, get rid of those. Maybe I'll come in here and do like something like this, something more simplistic. And then what I'll do is I'll make a selection of this this time. So I just drew a massive selection on here. Control T. And this time I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to jump, jump past perspective. I'm going to jump to warp. Warp on here. And again, I just clicked on this to get this warp and what this opens up is ability to to manipulate corners as well as boxes in the center as well as these uh, I guess secondary points here and you, you can get a lot of control over how you might be able to manipulate something so you can really really twist this around and don't worry about it connecting you can always paint those things back in so just just go for the parts that you really want to focus on the shape I'm not sure what I'm you know again we're just trying to create forms here and then we worry about cleaning them up. So I kind of liked the one before. Kind of like that. Maybe what I'll do is I'll do just a straight up rotate on it as well. So I'm going to move it up like this. And then like I said, it's not going to be perfect. It never is. And then you kind of come in and it's just to spur ideas. Actually, I think I'm going to reduce this point a bit. I think it's a little bit too much of a point. I think I went too far though. So maybe something like that. And then maybe I'll come in and I'm doing this little thing down here a lot, so maybe I'll just get rid of that. Put it maybe here. Fills, 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 fills. I don't like the way this is coming out at all. But that's the whole point, is to try things out. You're gonna hear me say that a lot actually. And of course, you can come in here also, because this is the last one I, I want to talk about this, is you can come in here and um, let me try and transform this, flatten this up a bit, hold on shift, maybe flatten it a bit. I'm going to go come in here and use the marquee tool, and switch my marquee to a circular marquee. Again, shift M will let you toggle back and forth between the subtools, or you can just click here. Let me see impatient so that's why I always hit shift in maybe you wanna 
drag a circle in here, maybe delete it. Again, I, I don't know why you, maybe you're trying to lighten the axe, but, you know, something like that, maybe, or make it look more steampunky. Or you can also use this for shapes over here. Fill. In fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and use this just to kind of showcase this. And then I'll use the eraser tool, E key, make it much, 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 much smaller. Maybe something like that. Yeah. Just kind of clean that that form up a bit here. There we go. So you can see something like that. Again, I have no idea if that looks good. Make a copy of this. Flip it. Horizontal. Move it over. Kind of interesting. Kind of interesting design there. So you can see we made these axes pretty quickly. Now, what I would do is, I mean, I'd do a lot more of these um, before I would call anything finalized. And, you know, you can do this at any point in time, but what I would do is I would extend your canvas, and you do that how, there's a lot, again, a lot of different ways, but how I would do it is just use the C key, which is the crop tool, drag a box, and then if you drag outside, you send it, it will actually create more content. So if you, let's say, in this case, let's say I wanted to go far, let's say I wanted to do 10, and I got 6 here, if I drag, let's say, just I'm just guessing right now, drag out this direction and hit the crop tool, it will add things. It won't add pixels though, so if you have a background like I did, you have to come in here, go back to that background layer, select that color, again the I key, I is an igloo, will switch to the, the color samples. If you want this exact gray, I can color sample that gray, and I can fill this entire layer. I have nothing selected, so fill this entire layer again, foreground color, and get that gray back. And if I want to go back to black, there's a quick key for that. You don't have to. You can you can uh, paint select the uh, the axes, of course, to get black. But just the D key, Delta key, that goes straight back to black. So it switches the tool back to black. And then I would start drawing some more. You know, create. Uh, you know, usually I create rows of tens. You know, you know, I just made some copies just to showcase. You know, I'd make out like ten or so, and then maybe I might do some some more. Depends on how many you want to do. So that is a pretty good start on silhouettes. Give that a shot. I'm sure there'll be more videos on the subject, and maybe I'll try exploring different options and different ways of, of, of doing it. But the core idea is there. Just, just heavily use the lasso tool, heavily use the layers. You can sit there and make copies of things and move things around, and you're trying to explore different ideas. And these ideas would be, um, if, if they came out good, um, you would take those ones that did and you would you would expand upon them start really thinking about the How the form is and how things interconnect right now You're just paying attention to the far silhouette and exploring things as you go. So hope you enjoyed that uh, Until next time